Hi guys, today let's talk about antioxidants. What are they, why are they in everything, do you need them, or are they just a scam? Antioxidants frequently pop up across all types of skincare products and cosmetic lotions, creams, toners, essences, sunscreens, body washes, oh, and they're even in your foods. Antioxidants are substances that combine to neutralize reactive oxygen species, preventing oxidative damage to tissues throughout your body that would otherwise contribute to premature aging, including of your skin. What are reactive oxygen species? <laughs> reactive oxygen species is just an umbrella term for derivatives of molecular oxygen. And guess what? They are perfectly normal part of your biology. However, when there are too many reactive oxygen species, it can be very taxing to tissues because they generate a cascade of negative consequences, and that is referred to as oxidative stress. Now, your body has systems built in place to handle free radicals, but with age, those systems can become depleted. Oxidative stress is when you have excessive reactive oxygen species. This can damage DNA, proteins, lipids, and lead to cell damage and cell death. Antioxidants reduce free radical damage, preventing damage at the cellular level. Within the skin, they inhibit the inflammatory cascade that damages the epidermis and the dermis, including your collagen, leading to premature wrinkling. But it's not as simple as reactive oxygen species bad, antioxidants good. Again, reactive oxygen species are a part of normal human biology, and you want some of them on board because they are beneficial for maintaining homeostasis, balance. It's all about balance. Antioxidants, they can be helpful helpful in the situation of oxidative stress, but you have to have the right amounts. They have to be present in the right place at the right time. Unfortunately, nuance is frequently lacking in many conversations online regarding free radicals, oxidative stress, inflammation, and antioxidants. You want a little bit of inflammation, a little bit of stress in the body. It is a good thing, and it actually is correlated with longevity. There's lots of research behind this. And again, your body has its own systems for handling free radicals. These include superoxide dismutase, catalase, and glutathione peroxidase. Many factors can influence the balance of reactive oxygen species in the skin, leading to oxidative stress. Ultraviolet radiation not only generates reactive oxygen species, by damaging proteins and lipids in the skin, but it also depletes your skin's antioxidant systems. In addition to ultraviolet radiation from the sun, you also have visible light. Visible light, which is the light that you see with your eyes, is responsible for about 50% of the reactive oxygen species generated when your skin is exposed to sunlight. Smoking and alcohol consumption further tips this balance over the edge favoring oxidative stress. Smoking and alcohol are behaviors that deplete the antioxidant systems in your skin and generate a lot of inflammation. And environmental exposures like pollution can create a cascade that leads to oxidative stress. Pollutants, or particulate matter from pollutants, they cause lipid peroxidation in the top layers of the skin, and that generates a cascade that can lead to premature skin aging, but also just skin barrier impairment and leaving you more prone to skin problems. Distinct from sun damage, you have glycation in the skin, which is essentially sugars binding to proteins in the skin. This process leaves the collagen in the last in your skin stiff and contributes to wrinkles as well as free radicals that generate more inflammation. With age, your skin thins and the levels of antioxidant systems in the skin, if you will, begin to decline. So your skin with age becomes even more vulnerable to environmental stressors that generate reactive oxygen species. You become more vulnerable to oxidative stress. Also, your diet can influence, to a certain extent, how well your skin is able to handle reactive oxygen species. Diets rich in fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, there's some evidence that these, these types of foods can help your skin overall in handling reactive oxygen species. Oxidative stress in the skin can aggravate a number of underlying skin conditions, including acne, atopic dermatitis, hyperpigmentation, for example, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or melasma. The discoloration of the skin from these conditions is made much worse by environmental exposures that lead to oxidative stress. At this point in the video then, you're probably thinking, well shoot, I'm gonna go buy some antioxidant skincare then. I mean, why not, right? Like our skin can only do so much for us. You just said that with age, these systems start to decline and you know, underlying skin conditions that I might be dealing with, uh, couldn't I benefit? 
Sounds appealing, right? It sounds appealing. However, there are a lot of limitations that you have to factor in when it comes to antioxidants in the skin. It's not as straightforward as, oh, here's a cream with antioxidants. I'm gonna put it on my face and it's gonna help me out 100% guaranteed in some way, shape or form, so it must be worth it. There are a few reasons why antioxidants may be completely useless, whether it be applying them to your skin or taking them internally, say from a supplement. Reactive oxygen species affect different pathways in different situations situations. Because of this, the antioxidants that you put on your skin or take in internally, they may be either redundant or completely useless for that particular pathway. The other reason is the choreography is out of sync with the music. In other words, reactive oxygen species being generated in the target tissue, in this case the skin, they may not align with the antioxidant in terms of when it is delivered to the skin. So for example, maybe you're putting on your sunscreen with antioxidants in it in the morning, um, but by the time the free radicals are being generated, maybe that antioxidant has already you know, been a bystander in some other reaction and it's no longer there where you're wanting it to be. It's, it's really just you know, not in the right place at the right time, in other words. The third and probably more pressing issue is bioavailability. Do the antioxidants even get into the skin? Do they even get there to an appreciable level? Whether it be putting them on the skin or importantly, taking them in in supplement form. A lot of research on different dietary antioxidant supplements, for example, suggests that they don't really make it to your skin. So it may be just that we need to work on formulations. Likewise, antioxidants aren't necessarily very stable in skincare products. And antioxidants in skincare products, they are under the umbrella of what is referred to as a cosmetic ingredient. So they're not regulated like drugs, and therefore, the antioxidants in one brand's products may be actually quite good, whereas another brand's products may not be formulated well enough to really affect much change. And as a consumer, there's no way for you to know which ones are good and which ones aren't because they're not out there doing comparison studies on their formulas. We just buy them in good faith that they are getting in and doing something for us. And because the benefit of antioxidants in skincare may not be something that you visually appreciate, you really are operating on good faith that they are doing something. I've pointed this out before in my personal skincare routine. I do use a variety of products with antioxidants, moisturizers, sunscreens, serums, and many of them, I'm not sure if it's doing anything or not because while it's not negatively impacting me, it's not as though I have a microscope all the time and I'm constantly taking biopsies out of my skin to reassess the collagen quality in my skin. If I did that, I'd be covered with scars and what a mess that would be. So we, we just don't see real time how or if topical antioxidants are doing anything. And in addition to the formulation, the bioavailability, you also have to factor in the dose. You need the right dose, just the right amount of antioxidants to really address the issue. Too little, probably not going to do anything. Too much, maybe a bad thing. For example, research looking at dietary antioxidant supplements actually shows an association with an increased risk of certain types of cancers with certain oral antioxidants in, in supplement form. And we don't have good studies to guide the optimal dosing. Morning, evening, two hours before, two hours after, when should these be applied? right before you go to bed? Question mark. And what antioxidant should you choose for what scenario? For example, if you live in a city and you commute in traffic, you're exposed to a lot of pollution, maybe there's certain antioxidants that would benefit you, whereas other antioxidants may be better suited to somebody who is going to spend their day surfing outside exposed to a lot of UV, you know, maybe they're better antioxidants. Or maybe you're someone who is trying to fade hyperpigmentation. Uh, maybe there are certain antioxidants that are going to more specifically address the uh, uh, oxidative stress that leads to pigment production and, and, and you know the, the timing of application. And again, formulation, formulation, formulation. We need good studies to come to a consensus for these different antioxidants as to what the best formulation is for optimal bioavailability, making sure it actually gets in. Because these are cosmetic ingredients, uh, you know, we don't even know what we're dealing with half the time. And last but not least, more does not necessarily mean better. I don't think that throwing antioxidant after antioxidant after antioxidant on things is going to put out the fire of possible damage. I do think antioxidants in skincare products have the potential to be very beneficial for your skin for a variety of skin outcomes, but I would not lose sleep 
over, over trying to introduce them into your routine, trying to pick the best one, or really wondering what is the best one. It's a gap in knowledge. No one, no dermatologist can point to an antioxidant on a shelf and say, this is the best. For example, a lot of dermatologists, myself included, when it comes to recommending uh, vitamin C serums, will point to the SkinCeuticals Ferulic one because it does have some good research showing that it actually gets into the skin and affects change. But we don't have research really showing like uh, how it compares to any other formula on the market. Maybe there's one out there that's a lot better. No one's going to know. No one is actually going to know that in an objective way. They're just going to be guessing or have their own personal biases. It may actually be that rather than having a high dose of an antioxidant, smaller doses of multiple different types of antioxidants cocktailed together in a formula optimized for bioavailability and for your specific needs are actually much, much better than just mega doses of any one antioxidant. And last but not least, what about dietary supplements with antioxidants? The recommendation I would give you is to stick to foods as your source of antioxidants. It seems as though antioxidants from your foods, that's the best way to get them. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds. I mean, almonds are packed with vitamin E. Um, that's, that's one. Actually, I want to do a video as a side note. Comment below and if you would like to hear more about almonds and their benefit for skin health, because I think they're definitely an underrated food. You might be surprised to, to learn what, what benefits can be had from incorporating almonds into your diet, provided you don't have a serious allergy to them. Anyway, guys, that's what I wanted to talk about for today's video regarding antioxidants, because it's something that comes up time and time and time again across all of my videos. You know, this has antioxidants, this has antioxidants, but I really want you as a consumer to understand there are serious gaps in knowledge when it comes to antioxidants, not to say that they're useless, but you know, take, take that and keep that in mind when you are you know, making decisions about what to buy. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. Speaking of what to buy, on the end slate, I'm going to put my recent video where I go into the drugstore and I shop with you guys and we talk about drugstore products with antioxidants. You're definitely gonna wanna watch that one next, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.